What's going on Salt Strong Nation? Today I want to be analyzing some pro tips for paddle tails that are going to help you get onto some more fish. I recently made a video on paddle tails versus jerk shads, when to use which one, and it seemed like the paddle tails were by far one of the favorite lures of anglers out there, and they wanted to know what they could do to get onto more fish with them. So I wanted to take a little bit of a deeper dive into the paddle tail and how you can use it to catch more fish. So as I covered in the prior video, paddle tails are one of the best search baits around. You can cover a lot of ground with them and just by mixing in a few pauses and twitches, you can get a lot of reaction strikes out of fish. Not as many as you would with jerk shads, but again, the pro to these is that you can make three or four casts and cover a full retrieve in the time that it takes you to use the jerk shad. So again, you're gonna cover a lot of ground with these and you're gonna end up getting onto a lot more fish. We gotta remember, fishing is a numbers game and if we kinda take a look at this little animation here, in the time it would take me to find the fish with the jerk shad, I'm able to cover way more ground with the paddle tail. Again, it's a more constant retrieve. So I'm able to feel out all of those areas. And this is the same concept you're gonna see in marsh creeks as well. It's just gonna be some slightly different structure, but I felt that this would just be a little bit easier to see. Again, you're gonna be covering a lot more ground with that paddle tail, and you're gonna end up getting onto more fish. We never know which pothole is going to have a redfish or a trout in it. And being able to cover more potholes as opposed to really getting into a deep dive of a single series of them, you're gonna end up getting getting onto more fish. Yes, you likely will get more fish that will strike the jerk shad, but you're not gonna be able to cover as much ground. Once you have found the fish with the paddle tail, that jerk shad can outwork it, but the big pro with the paddle tail and what you need to be using it for is covering a lot of ground. So make sure that you're not staying in one area, that you're covering as much ground as possible. Once you've hit all of those angles in a small general area, move on to that next zone, that next creek, that next small flat, and start fan casting that area as well. That's gonna be what gets you onto the most fish and that's how I really find most of my success with paddle tails It's just power fishing them in different zones working different angles. Now another really important tip that we learned by watching some underwater footage with these paddle tails is that you need to be incorporating small drops and twitches with your paddle tails. The constant retrieve a lot of times can get fish to come up and strike it but the actual drop itself is what you're going to get a lot of hits on. I find myself getting a lot of hits from trout specifically on the drop as they are ambush predators. They have their eyes on the top of their head and as you guys can see in this underwater footage, as that paddle tail starts to come down, those trout immediately lock in on it. It's almost like a genetic response from these fish and they absolutely pounce on it and crush it. I find the same thing happening with redfish. I'll stop my retrieve, that paddle tail goes down and they crush it. Uh, and the same thing happens with flounder as well. Just that simple twitch, twitch drop and you're gonna get a lot of fish that hit on that drop and you're gonna be able to land more fish. But again, if you're just doing a constant retrieve, you're not gonna be getting those reaction strikes from fish that may be following or maybe close by and that drop is going to be what triggers that bite. So make sure that, you know, two to three times throughout a fully casted retrieve, you're making those stops or just stop halfway. A lot of times those fish will key in on it and follow it for long periods of time. I like to do two to three, but you can just do a, you know, stop halfway if you're trying to cover a lot of ground. Now lastly, it's really important that you have these rigged correctly for the area that you're fishing. Depth control is huge with paddle tails and the way that you want them to ride is just a couple inches off the bottom when they're constantly being retrieved. And then you can give it a twitch twitch pause up and allow that drop to get those reaction strikes. Or if you're retrieving it a little bit faster and it's higher up in the column, allow for a little bit of a longer drop. Most of those strikes are gonna occur, you know, six to 12 inches off of the bottom. If you're fishing over grass, it's gonna occur a couple inches over the grass because that's where those predators are. So think about where the strike zone is and try to put your jig head and the weightless hooks that you're using in that strike zone. So if you're fishing a grass flat, you know, that's two to three feet in depth, I typically am not going to use anything more than, you know, a one eighth ounce jig head uh, or a one eighth ounce uh, owner twist lock. Those are the two hooks that I tend to find myself using most. Uh, and if I'm fishing in less than a foot of water, typically I'm going to use a one sixteenth ounce weedless hook. And if I'm fishing in really deep water, if I'm jigging for flounder, I'm usually going to go with a one fourth ounce. So so think about the fish that you're targeting and where their strike zone is going to be and that you absolutely are pairing that with the hooks that you're going to use or the jig heads that you're going to use because if you're not putting that lure in the strike zone, it's likely not gonna get hit. So I hope these tips were helpful for you guys and they help you get onto more fish with these paddle tails. And if you wanna pick up some of these slam shadies, we've obviously got them at fishstrong.com at 20% off for Salt Strong Insiders. So thank you guys so much again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the Salt Strong Insider community.
So if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you'll be catching more fish in less time while saving money on your tackle. We do this by providing you with premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and access to group discounts on the best saltwater fishing tackle. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. We hope to see you in the Insider Club family soon.